Hello and welcome to this QRMD offered educational webinar. Our topic today is marketing your practice on a shoestring. My name is Robert Goff and I will be sharing with you some thoughts and some techniques to promote your practice on a shoestring. Our official disclaimer, if you would note, we provide general information and not legal information. So if you need legal advice, please seek a competent uh, attorney. And the material is copyrighted for your use. And please, I hope you will find it useful. We have to recognize that patient volume is down. Physicians are not seeing the same volume and demand for their services that they had in the past. Now, this may vary with individual specialties and uh, individual locations, but in general, patient volume is dropping. This is really being driven by the higher deductibles and higher cost sharing, and that's dampened the demand for physician visits. The days of the three, five, or ten dollar copay are really pretty much over, and those large deductibles that people hear about um, when they read their health benefit plan. That's saying to them, stay away, and they are. We also find that patient loyalty is not what it used to be. Convenience becomes the major factor. There are some studies out that convenience may even be more important to patients when seeking medical care than quality. Well, that's largely because patients can't judge quality. They assume it. Additionally, the physician office visit has some competition. The urgent care center as well as telemedicine, are giving patients an opportunity to have their medical needs addressed without coming into the physician practice. This drives a need to market your practice, to create a greater awareness of your practice and what it offers. Basically, in marketing, what you're trying to do is make more people aware of your existence, your availability, and have a positive impression. The more that occurs, the more likely it is that yours will be the practice that they seek out or that they refer others to. Now, some of the simple promotional opportunities that you have with your practice are as simple as these. My card. There's no reason not to invest in business cards for each of your staff. You've just turned them into marketers for your practice, a very inexpensive way of promoting your name. The business card is going to have your practice information on it, of course the individual's name and title as well. Most people in physician offices don't have business cards, and people who have business cards have a tendency to hand them out, friends, family, and others. We also have to recognize that when people are looking for physicians, the recommendations they often seek are from people who work within the medical community. So if your physician assistant, your office manager, your, your aides can readily pull out a business card with their name on it, they're really proud to have their name on a business card, it's going to end up in the hands of someone else who will either be a future patient or maybe a future referrer of patients. Now, marketing that practice continues once the patient hits the office. You know, the, met, the waiting room is an opportunity to promote your practice as well. Just because they're in the door doesn't mean they're going to come back. Just because they're in the door and are there for a visit doesn't mean they're going to walk away with the most positive experience. Help that along a bit. Take everything out of your private office, that, uh, all those diplomas, those certificates, that expertise that you've very proudly earned, and move it to the waiting room. Let them know your clinical expertise, your knowledge. They may even find that there's some link between themselves and you in old school ties. But that creation of the image that they are meeting with someone with a great deal of expertise helps give the positive impression to the practice, which carries through the visit to after the visit. Likewise, become known even to your own patients in your waiting room. Pictures of yourself and all clinicians hanging on the wall with biographical sketches is a great technique. You don't have time anymore in an office exam to get to know each other well. So jumpstart the process. Your picture, that helps them know who they're going to see. 
as well as a bio sketch that helps them know the humanity that you are. The more patients are comfortable knowing who they're seeing, the more satisfied they are with the visit. Now, keep that promotion going by getting out of the office. Get known. You want to become known in the community. This is the opportunity for you to bring your expertise out to no and low-cost events. How many health fairs are there that you have an opportunity to do screenings at? Well, I'll consider offering in your community a free or low-cost camp physicals or the like through organizations such as Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts. Back-to-school physicals as well through your church or synagogue. These are opportunities to show compassion, caring, and community involvement. It's great exposure with really little to no cost. Likewise, take your education, your knowledge, and offer educational programs at civic and religious organizations. Many of them are looking for topics. They're looking for access to information, and you have a tremendous amount of that. You can offer to bring current topics to your local organizations. Also look to offer medical advice in the local newspapers or the local radio stations. You're really not going to get much play in terms of the big TV stations and of course not the big newspapers, but these weekly newspapers and local radio stations are desperate or near desperate for content. And having the opportunity to have a column by a physician on current topics is a tremendous benefit to them and a tremendous benefit to you in no-cost promotion. Get out of your office and join some CIFIS organizations and invite and suggest that your staff do the same. Maybe you'll pay the dues for a staff who joins the Rotary Club or some of the other local clubs and organizations. Being out and about and meeting people outside of the medical field you're the expert, you're the medical wise man or woman, you're the person that people will turn to when they're looking for a physician. Additionally, many of these uh, meetings become opportunities to promote services that you have in your office or even become the company physician for a local business. Great opportunity of building a referral base and referral sources without spending money. As you think of organization and groups to connect with, think ethnically, religiously, demographically, and geographically. Any organization that you have an affinity with, churches like to help members of their own congregation. The local, org, local community has local groups that are looking to connect with each other. Think in, ter in those terms when reaching out, but get out of the office and get known and get some assistance out there with staff, your office manager, your medical assistants, and the like. Now, you've been collecting information as uh, patients register, and you should be capturing their email addresses as well as permission to send them information. You know, use that email address to promote appropriate services. Remind patients of the services that they can access in your office, where usually there's no deductible. Many health plans allow for an annual physical not subject to the deductible, but patients not knowing this stay away. They don't want to have to pay for it themselves. Remind them that that's what may be available under their plan without being subject to the deductible. Of course, if you offer new services, promote it and offer education that's current, seasonal information, flu season, back to school, camp, and the like. If there's a hot topic happening in healthcare, in medicine, you can use your email and should use your email to let the patients know where you stand on it. So if there's a uh, local story about uh, flu vaccines and the appropriateness, well, get something out to your email distribution list on your position of, of uh, flu vaccines. The same may be true for any other current topic that's in the community. The more you promote yourself as an expert to your current patients, they will promote you to future patients. The internet can no longer be ignored. You have to be findable. It's expected. And you really need a source on the internet that you control, some venue where you can present yourself 
and present yourself well. Your vision for your practice, the great things about your practice, your credentials, special services that you have, what makes you special, and information about your specialty, educational materials that are appropriate for your specialty. If you have do procedures or you do testing, make sure you have educational information on the site about how to prepare for those and what they mean and when they're used. And of course, the site that you set up needs to make it easy for people to reach you to set up an appointment, not just online, but by picking up the phone as well. Make sure people can reach you. And while you're thinking about the internet and what you control, Google yourself and find out what's out there that you kind of don't control. See where you're listed. See how you are being listed. Is the information correct or is it an error? Of course, if it's an error, see if you can get it corrected. You want to make sure people have uh, promoting your current phone number, your current address. And you're going to find yourself on rating sites, potentially with things that you don't like. So generally, you can comment back. Now, you're not going to get into a fight over the person who sent a negative comment in, but you can send a note saying you're sorry for the experience, invite them to contact your office because something doesn't uh, seem right and you'd like to make it right. Show some concern. And if you can promote among your patients, uh, putting in evaluations online, positives drown out negatives. The best way to handle a negative comment online is to drown it out with positives. People don't expect you to be perfect, for every comment to be a rave review. But a balance, so I'll see some negative, but a positive response, positive responses, positive evaluations, and a thoughtful response to a negative one goes a long way to dampening a uh, patient's view of the negative evaluations. Marketing continues after the visit. You have to make the visit about the patient. That is what it's about. So you want to find out how you're doing. And the best time to do it is after a first visit to your office. Now a call to a patient by a member of your staff after they've had their first visit is unexpected and long remembered as a mark of caring by the practice. It's also going to be a great source of information about your practice, of how your practice is viewed in the eyes of the patient. This is not a hard process to set up. You don't have that many new patients a week. Have one of your existing staff take on this responsibility in the evening after hours with a script with some prepared questions. Make sure that if they know the patient has another val- uh, appointment scheduled, that they can, they, they can be reminded of it at the same time. But that call which says, Mrs. Smith, thank you so much. Uh, the, doctor, uh, the, the doctor is pleased that you saw them. Uh, we wanted to make sure everything went well. Were there any follow-up questions that you had? Did the doctor answer the questions? And by the way, do you have any other feedback about the practice? Believe me, That unusual call showing that concern is going to go a long way in promoting your practice to that patient you saw and to everybody they tell about, tell the story to. You also want to make sure you don't lose contact with the patient after they've had a dramatic event, a procedure, a hospitalization. So after they return home from an outpatient procedure or from a hospitalization, a call is tremendously important. This is especially true if you're not the one who provided the service. You want to make sure that your patient knows that the specialist that they saw, the hospitalist they saw, is part of the care team that you oversee, that you managed, and you remain their physician. Now, the early recommendations are applicable for both primary care physicians and specialists, but referrals are the lifeblood of a specialist practice. And there are a few extra things that kind of need to be said. You need to protect your existing referral sources. They are not as stable as you may believe. They can change overnight. One of your referral sources may retire. Or your referral source may become an employee of a uh, hospital or join a medical group where the referral practices are expected to change to keep the referrals within-house or in the group. 
that can be dramatically disruptive to your practice. Professional relationships are all about personal relationships. Quality is assumed. All right? So you need to understand and build a database of where do your referrals come from. Do they come from physicians? Do they come from non-physicians? Who refers to you and what do they refer to you? Do they refer to you the kind of cases you want? Is somebody referring to only patients of a certain pay source that maybe is less desirable? You need to know what kind of business in volume, quality, clinical demand is being referred to and by whom. This is true for physicians and non-physicians. The non-physician who may be referring to you is the HR director of a local company or maybe the leader of a civic organization. And you want to give them back what they want. Of course, keeping it legal. Now, ask. Ask the question. You know, do you want, don't assume that you know what they want. Do they want updates? Do they want calls, a letter? What's going to make it better and easy for them to make the referral? Maybe that physician um, wants, to see, wants a phone call after you've seen one of their patients, as well as a written consultation report. Maybe that civic leader just wants to be touched base with every now and then, thank them for referrals. Of course, HIPAA means you can't tell them anything. And see if you're easy. If they're saying uh, that they're having trouble reaching your office or that's what they're hearing back, make sure you give them an inside phone line answered by your manager or maybe even your cell number. Communicate to these people what's great about your practice. Don't assume they know. If you know who's referring, you can produce that kind of information, whether it's personally and you, when you talk to them or maybe in a newsletter form or in an update letter quarterly. You want to keep the communication consistent. You want to know that, they, that you are there for them and you want to stay in touch. Also, make sure that you and your staff are respecting their staff. Office staff have a great deal of influence on where referrals go. There are generally multiple specialties, uh, specialists of the same specialty available to be referred to by an office. And that staff is going to be very directional when it comes to m making a recommendation if they've had a problem in terms of how they are treated or difficulty with your office in setting up an appointment or they hear negative feedback from patients they've referred to or if they themselves have not been treated with respect by your staff or perhaps yourself. Entertain appropriately. Think birthdays. Think holidays. Perhaps choose a day different than the general gift giving of Christmas time to send that box of chocolate or whatever else it is. Birthdays are great for that, but you might want to pick another date. Maybe Halloween. Uh, maybe July 4th. I've often thought that if you sent out a little something on the, the gift that you would do at Christmas time, sending that out at another time of the year creates a very more memorable event because it's out of the ordinary. Sometimes gift giving at Christmas time, yours gets lost with others. So maybe pick some other event, maybe with a little note saying, you know, celebrating my fifth anniversary in practice. Thank you for your referrals. Do it other than holiday time, and it will be more memorable. Who's going to be the physician liaison in your practice? Who's going to keep working those relationships, making sure that the outreach is done? Don't forget to stay in touch with them. Their practice situation may be changing, and that's going to impact you. Or perhaps there's an element of disappointment over something that occurred between your practice and theirs. You want to head off a problem early, off, early on. Plan for your referrals and those relationships. As I said before, the referral relationship is not stable. It's not guaranteed. It's one that can change on a dime, impacting your practice. Remember that everybody is responsible for marketing. Make it so. That positive patient experience in your practice leads to positive stories by patients as they talk to their friends and their coworkers. A negative experience leads to the same kind of stories. So part of marketing is really every element of the patient experience. That every element of the transaction with your practice, 
from that first phone call to the billing. That all hits the experience and all is about marketing your practice. And as you're out there trying to develop greater awareness in the community, greater knowledge of your practice to build up more patients, make sure your practice is patient ready. You may have an available, you may have an uptick in inquiries into your practice. Make sure your staff is welcoming. Make sure your schedule is accommodating. Try to accommodate every prospective patient the same day if you can. If it means leaving a little bit of room for that or fitting them in, remember you want, you're competing against urgent care, people who have built their business on instant gratification. You can't handle walk-ins generally, but you can generally fill in, fill in one extra patient a day and accommodate them or maybe the next day. The sooner you get to them, the sooner you respond to them, the more likely you will capture them and accommodate them. Consider as well adding telemedicine to your practice. It can be a new source of revenue as well as patients. And it does provide a high degree of satisfaction for existing patients. For many physicians, telemedicine can turn those inquiry calls that take time into revenue-producing calls. 68% of calls by prospective patients are poorly handled. That's a scary number. That means your practice needs to be welcoming. 90% of staff never invite a patient to make an appointment based on a phone call. Things that can't happen in your office if you're going to grow. If the patient has the experience of being put on hold, the impression is you don't care. If their call is forgotten about or dropped, you don't care. If nobody picks up or they get a busy signal, not only is the phone busy, but you're too busy. You don't need patients. You don't want them. If the person at the front desk is rude, they're expecting rude care. If the person is harried, they're just too busy to really deal with the call and they're very abrupt, then you're too busy for new patients. And if they don't know the answer to basic questions, you're not helpful and neither is the practice. So some thoughts that I, that I share with you with the idea of promoting and marketing your practice. I thank you for joining us, and I hope that you will join us for upcoming webinars offered by CureMD.